Persian what Persian <laughs> precision. That's one of the example of precision. And here you have another example, okay? If the wheel is not in rotation, I'm trying to hang it, it could uh, drop down like that. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate the wheel. Okay, this is called precision. And <laughs> and if I rotate it in the opposite direction, uh, no. yeah. can you help me to rotate it in that direction? <laughs> then it will go to the opposite direction of precision. Um, so this is uh, called the precision, and so we try to understand why we have this uh, kind of situation. The, you see the phenomenon is that without the rotation, okay, it will go stuck, but with the rotation, the uh, wheel can stay uh, and rotate like that. Okay, so this is a uh, Related to the existence of the angular momentum, okay. After I will rotate the <coughs> wheel, it will have some angular momentum. Now, let we can understand why it happens. So let's first think about the um, linear motion. Okay. For the linear motion, if you have some object, this object doesn't have any momentum. Okay, P equals to zero, or velocity equals to zero. Okay. If I make some force to the object, so the object will fall, will fall down, right? But now, if I, the object itself has some momentum, like this, if I give it some force, then it will not directly fall down, right? It will undergo some curved motion like this. If I keep giving some uh, uh, force perpendicular to the motion, it will form some circular motion like this. Now, we're thinking about this object. Okay? Before I rotate it, so this is just some stationary object. And I'm trying to support it from this point, hang with this point. But the center of mass for the wheel is at here, right? So there is a force, gravitational force here. So it looks like this, if you have a wheel here, and I'm trying to hang here. But the for gravitational force is here. So about the hanging point here, this force will produce some torque, okay, which equals to the R multiplied by the weight mg W, okay. So the torque equals to R cross the weight force W, okay. And in fact, you can determine what is the direction of this torque. What is the direction of this talk? R cross W. Use the right hand rule to determine the direction of the talk. What is the direction of R? This is the rotational center, so this is R, right? And the force is downward, so if R cross W, give you what direction? Yes, okay, R cross W. So you have a direction to, you have a torque to this direction. Okay. Now, um, and then if, okay, on the other hand, the wheel is in rotation, right? Okay, so if the wheel is in rotation, you are going to have some angular momentum around from this rotation. Okay. And the angular momentum
for the rotation is determined also by a uh, right hand rule. Okay. In fact, it's always perpendicular to the rotation. Another right hand rule is that if you make if the wheel is rotated like this, okay, and then you make your finger around the direction of the rotation. And then it will give you the uh, direction of the angular momentum. So the direction of the angular momentum is in this direction. Okay. This is kind of derived from our original uh, uh, right hand rule. Okay. So if this is the speed wheel, uh, speed of the wheel to this direction, this is direction of the radius. So from R cross P, the momentum. Okay, so this is the direction of the angular momentum. Okay. So if it's rotate uh, like uh, this, okay. Uh, yes, if it's rotate like this, then the direction of the angular momentum, okay, let's rotate like this. Uh, if it's rotate like this, okay, the direction of the angular momentum will be this this direction. So the angular momentum direction L. Okay. Now we determine that the torque is in this direction, right? So the angular momentum is in this direction. The torque is in this direction. The torque is try to try to change the angular momentum, right? Remember, torque equals to d l over d t. Okay. So that means a torque will introduce some angular momentum change. So what happens is that in this case the torque is perpendicular to the angular momentum. So the torque in this direction, angular momentum in this direction. So the torque will not accelerate or decelerate the rotation here. It will change the direction of the rotation. So initially, the direction of the rotation is to that. Uh, another way to say that the direction of the rotation of plane is pointing to this direction. Now you have a torque to this direction, so to try to pull the weight like this. Okay. So that forms the uh, precession. If the wheel is rotating opposite direction, so the angular momentum in this direction. Okay, in that case, it will, the torque will put to that direction. Okay. So that's why you have the precession. Uh, so for any object uh, in rotation, if you have some perpendicular torque, it will make the precession. Okay. Like the uh, uh, this one is called the gyro, uh, gyro, gyroscope. Okay, it's uh, from the phenomenon of the precession. The application of the precession in uh, is that in the airplane, especially for those high-speed jet plane, those uh, fighter, how can they know the direction, control the direction? Okay, because they are going to do many. Uh, uh, crazy uh, movement for those jet air, uh, fighter, right? Okay, after several cycles, if you don't have anything to control the direction, then uh, the pilot wouldn't know where should go next. Okay, so in fact, it's to use this kind of things to control the direction. Another application for this one is the precession of the curves. So for the Earth, it has the rotation about the center of the Earth. And on the other hand, it feels the gravitational force from the Sun. So just like this one, the torque produced by the gravitational force will make the precession. So the direction of the axis for the Earth actually change. So it's not always like when the Earth rotates. The direction, if this is the direction of axis, it's not like this, okay? In fact, when it keeps binding like that. And so, 
Like many years ago, it may point into one particular star, but now it points into another star. It's different. Okay. So the result of this is the shifting of the zodiac. So right now, the first zodiac starts with from which month? Hmm? February? February or March? March. But it's not January, right? It's March. March, I think it's March, kind of. Uh, which one is the first one? Yeah. Aries. Aries, okay. Is it here? No. Okay. Uh, so now, okay, the first one is Aries. So it now it starts, I guess it's in the March, or sometime between the February and March. So I don't know if you're wondering why it's not start from it's not starting from the Jan, uh, January, right? It should start from January, Zodiac. In fact, uh, about two thousand years ago, when they made the when they invented the Zodiac, the Aries starts from January. So January is Air, uh, Aries, and then like that, it follows the order. But now. Since the shifting of the axis, so now uh, January not starts from Aries, starts from uh, something before that. Okay, so that's why the zodiac now it starts from uh, March, not from January. Okay, because uh, many years years ago, that means in January uh, you will see uh, in January you will see the Aries. Okay, uh, but uh, now you're not going to see areas uh, above your head. Um, so that's application of the precision. Do you have any question? Now let's go to the problem. Okay, let's look at some problems to apply the angular momentum.